Hey everyone, welcome, welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. And today we're going to reassemble a Predator 212 single cylinder go-kart engine. Now the old engine you can see from this photo here stopped running because the flywheel broke. So we took the whole engine apart. We're gonna put new gaskets in. We did a couple modifications, which we'll show you here with some brand new parts to make it last longer than it did the first time. It's not gonna be a big hot rod, super horsepower build, just kind of a bulletproof stock, if that makes any sense to you. Build on this engine, and let's take it to the bench and show you what we got going on. Okay, and before we reassemble the engine, we got our goodie boxes, again, from our friends at Go Power Sports, and we also got a flywheel uh, from Racers Pro out of Memphis, they're on eBay. First, our friends at Go Power Sports, of course, we get the courtesy sticker pack. Always appreciate that. An itemized receipt for everything that we have here. Now we picked up the engine, the go-kart that this motor's going on, it needed a new throttle cable, so we picked up one of them. All new fuel line. The starter cup, because the old one was trash when the flywheel blew up, so we got a new one of those. We got a complete gasket set with the back cover gasket, valve cover gasket, um, thin steel head gasket for the non-Hemi Predator, which is what we have here. We have a clutch bolt because one was missing. A couple fuel filters. It's always a good idea to put a fuel filter in between the gas tank and the carburetor. In case you're not um, looking around. And also, the engine, when it came here, it didn't have the pull starter thing. Um, we got the one that goes on a Tolitson, but they're pretty much all the same. We got the matching cup here too. But why we didn't get the one for the Predator? Because it's the same thing. And this one was a couple bucks cheaper. But thanks to our friends at Go Power Sports for getting these parts to me in a timely manner. Appreciate that every time. Okay, and also from a company called Racers Pro. Racers Pro Equip. Memphis, Tennessee. They're on eBay. And they had a couple cool things that I needed. Since the old Predator flywheel exploded last time, we got us a new cast aluminum. Now, there's a couple different versions you can get. This one is a cast aluminum kind of for what we're going after. It's got 28 degrees of timing in it, and these are good to 10K. So unlike the original flywheel, this one's not gonna explode. They also sent me a coil, um, and this is the replacement coil, because the coil that was on the motor was rusty like the flywheel, so it was junk. And this one also has no RPM limit, which is nice. So thanks to those guys for sending this in a timely fashion. Put their links below. But let's go ahead and get this motor put back together. Okay, we have our engine here. We have it all cleaned, assembled. As you remember from the last video, the cylinder had a little bit of crust in it, so we took a hone to it, cleaned up real nice. There's some discoloration, but you can't even feel it with a fingernail or anything like that. So for this, it'll be good enough. Block sanded the cylinder itself, make it nice and flat. We also... While we had the head off, we took that to the belt sander and made that nice and flat also. So a straight edge lays across there. Nice and flat, clean it up a little bit. Stock valves, they're all good. Everything looks, you know, good in the head. And again, this is a stock build. So stock parts are gonna work just fine. We already have the crank in. So the next step is to install our piston. And for this, this is how they get installed with the little finger that points down to scoop up the oil. And take out our bolts put a little pre lube in the oil hole here and we'll place this like so in the cylinder and we'll use our ring compressor to squeeze the piston down squeeze squeeze the rings on the piston down so we can go ahead and get that bad boy into the cylinder and one more thing also just to double check you have the piston incorrectly there's a little arrow that points down you don't have to crank on it. What you're doing is you're just squeezing those rings into the ring lanyards and the piston. So it's all one size, so it'll just pop right down into the... Give her a little tap. Okay. 
pops right in easy and get the rod into kind of this position here to where it's easy to put the cap back on and put the bolts back on the rod generally like it about there get yourself a little assembly lube the bottom part of the connecting rod so when we go to start it up it has some protection now this procedure is going to be the same whether you're doing this on a predator a tillotson or any of the other uh, chinesium clones that these motors are modeled after even the hondas pretty much everything is going to be exactly the same a few minor differences but it all goes together it comes apart the same way so the only thing that's going to be a little bit different is the torque. Um, some have different torque ratings for like the cover bolts, the rod bolts, things like that. So we're not going to cover exact torque specs. With this engine, you can look yours up. All right, and once you have your bolts in and you have them torqued, go ahead and give the whole assembly a rotation or two. Just to make sure everything's, you know, running nice, nothing's binding up. If it feels pretty good should be good to go all right next we want to install our camshaft now to install our camshaft we need our crank position at top dead center all right and that's when wet is when the piston is all the way at the top of the cylinder i'll show you what it should look like all right and we're also let me hold this up here real close and see if we can see that there's a little spot right there on the crank that's an indicator that matches up with the spot on the camshaft and here's the spot on the camshaft it might be a little bit hard to see from here but we line those two up we put a little pre-lube On our cam bearing surfaces, on the lobes of the cam, put a little bit on our gear set. Just make sure everything's nice and like I said, it's got some protection on fire up when we go to fire this motor up later on. All right, so that's set. But before we do that, we have to install our lifters. These are our lifters. This is what rides on the camshaft and moves the push rods up and down that opens the valves. So, you put a little pre-lube on these, on the stem. Not only is that protected at fire up, but it also, when you install these, they need to be up out of the way. This will hold them in the block up out of the way and defy gravity and that's what we're looking to do just for right now we need to defy some gravity okay a little bit of lube on everything all right and we go ahead and install our camshaft again the dot on the cam aligned with the dot on the crankshaft and this may take you once or twice and once you have it aligned right let me get closer for you matches up with your other dot your dot matches up with your other dot and your camshaft is timed that easy like i said if it takes you once or twice attempts to put that in there that's okay no big deal just pop it out rotate it just a hair either direction which way you're off pop her back in one thing to note like i said this is a stock rebuild but we have removed the governor and we have removed the low oil level sensor out of this engine because we don't really need it and they're a pain in the butt so they're gone other than that, everything inside the motor here is stock. Basically, you're done with the outside. So you go ahead and get your new gasket set, get out your outside cover, and place that cover on there, and torque your bolts down. And once you've popped your uh, back cover back on, reinstall the six bolts that hold the rear cover onto the case and you go ahead and tighten them down 
Again, like I said before, these all have a spec. So you use your tool here to just run them down loose, loosely, loosely. And go ahead and torque your rear cover. Again, every engine's a little bit different. So look up your torque specs and torque them down to spec. All right, once you have your back case torqued to spec, you can go ahead flip the motor over what I'd like to do next is a cylinder head again we've cleaned the surface we've decked it and with your dowels in the bottom because that's where they go your head gasket and we opted for the thin just steel head gasket on this one maybe raise the compression just a hair again stock rebuild but compression's your friend can't hurt go ahead it only goes on one way now This is completely optional. I like to copper spray the head gaskets before they go on. You can, it's not necessary. I just like to do it for my own, I don't know, I just like to do it. So if you're gonna do it, this is the stuff you're gonna look for. Let's get that sprayed and we'll be right back. All right, so we have our new head gasket copper sprayed. We just do this for sealing purposes. On a, a dry motor, air-cooled motor like this, does it do anything? Honestly, probably not. It's just for my own kind of mental well-being. Head gaskets on, dowels are in. Easy peasy, cylinder head only goes on one way. And again, we resurfaced this and ran it with a straight edge. It's nice and flat. The block is nice and flat. Now, some people say to do this. Some people say not to. I like to. I just like to use just a hair of blue Loctite on the threads, on the head bolts. Again, not a factory thing. Not a find it anywhere in your spec sheet thing. It's just something that I like to do. You like to do it, great. If you don't, great. If you tell them, you know, if I'm doing something completely wrong, down in the comments, let me know. But this has worked time and time and time again, and we don't have any problems with our head bolts losing torque and loosening up while running, because that's always a bummer and a bad day because then you have to get new gaskets and everything else, and you're down, or you just want to be out on your go-kart having fun. All these engines have a little bit different torque settings. I'm going to go ahead and get these tightened down, torqued down, and we'll be right back. Okay, we're moving along real nice here. Now, um, next step is going to be put in our push rods. Now, we did keep these separate. This is my intake, this is my exhaust, but as you can see, it doesn't much matter with this engine. Put them in either way. Okay, once you have your push rods in place, what you want to do, what I like to do, I like to rotate the motor over. Let's use the, let's use the new flywheel. And again, a nice cast aluminum flywheel, not a billet aluminum flywheel. This is about half the price at Racers Pro Quip on eBay. And uh, it's a nice piece. You, you won't have any problems out of this one. Now, before we final install that, we're going to, lap it in and everything but we're just using it just to turn the motor over once or twice make sure the valves are cycling see like you can see the exhaust valve is moving now it's got its full range of motion and we're gonna have to adjust these a little bit because we did by using that thinner head gasket and by taking a little bit of decking off of the block and a little bit of decking off of the cylinder head to clean them up to make them level we actually moved the cylinder head a little bit closer to the center line of the engine so we have a little bit of gap a little bit of excessive gap in our lifters so we just need a basic adjustment on those and with our valves adjusted you can go ahead and clean the surface off put in our new gasket put in our new gasket and then install our valve cover and your valve cover installs at four bolts one, two, three, four. Easy, easy, easy. And you're all done inside the motor. As you can see, we gussied this motor up a little bit, gave it a nice copper spray with like a gold paint on the valve cover just to dress it up a little, make it feel good. Maybe it'll run a little bit nicer for us. Now we can go ahead and install our bottom shield here, which directs air from the cover under the motor to keep everything cool. And then we'll go ahead and get our 
flywheel bolted down. And when you're installing your bottom shield here, there's one bolt here, one bolt there, and you're done. I don't think there's really a torch back on them. It should look like this. It should line up with the block here on the bottom. Again, we gussied it up a little bit just to dress this engine up a hair. And then now, anytime you're installing a new flywheel, you always want to use a new nut. Okay, and now that you have your flywheel installed, everything should spin over real nice. You should feel compression coming out of the spark plug hole, which you do. Everything looks to be in great shape. Now, we need to install the coil. Set the air gap on the coil. Install our carburetor and exhaust. And we're real close to the end here. Okay, when installing your coil, again, these are some bolts that you really don't want. Backing out, loosening up, moving, losing your air gap, and shutting you down while you're trying to have fun. So just a little bit of Loctite on these. Now we know what our air gap on this is supposed to be right around a little over 30. So let's see how we did. Okay, uh, we go ahead and reinstall our carburetor. Don't forget your phenolic block here. And this kind of sits, coil wire sits in there to keep it in place. Okay, once we have our carburetor on, before we put on our air box, we get to reinstall our linkage. Okay, top tip, now that you remove the governor, and all that silly linkage and all those springs. You really need something to connect the manual lever, which we're gonna hook our throttle cable up to, to this dude right here. Okay, this is fully closed and it's fully open on the throttle. What I'd like to use, I take some thin stainless steel TIG wire, and I use what's called the Z-Bend pliers for the end. Any of you that are fly model airplanes, you all know what that is. Okay. We're going to hook that like so. And the other end, we're going to mark. We're going to mark where this goes so we can put on our bend. And we're just going to put a straight down bend in it because it's just a hole that needs to go into it and a little kink to keep it in place. You'll see what I'm saying here, but let me get this marked and cut and I'll be right back. And here's what your contraption is gonna look like. All right, and I'll show you how this goes in here. It's pretty slick. And you can see right here, you put the little bend in. All right, let's see, where are we? You see right there, we put the little bend in there and that's what keeps it from falling out Keeps it from falling out on the top. Good shot of this, but we're fully on the throttle stop. Okay, we pull our throttle to advance and we go full throttle, return, full throttle, return. And we'll hook up a spring here, here. Once we put our throttle cable on the engine, we'll take a spring and go from here to somewhere out here for our return spring. And we're all set, so you get rid of all that crazy springs and linkage with one neat little piece. And we'll go ahead and install our airbox. Now we got a new airbox because the one that was on here was, well, it was a little beat up. So it was worth a few bucks to get the new airbox here. Front cover, an exhaust, a fuel tank. We'll do tomorrow because we need some fuel line. The fuel line we bought is a little too big. So we'll finish this up tomorrow. And, and I want to show you down here before we bolt our gas tank on. Whenever you redo this, do fuel line is your greatest insurance, especially since the factory ones don't come with a filter. It's a couple bucks for the line, the band clamps, and the filter. 
just put new stuff on. And we're just about done here, folks. We just need to install our cover. Okay, then we install our cover bolts. Let me go ahead and install our cover bolts. Let me just snugly those down. And you're done. You're all rebuilt. Looks good. You did a little bit of fancy work on the cover and the linkage and the heat plate to go ahead and dress it up. But we put on a, let's see the rest of it. It's just a regular muffler. It's not stock ported. It's not fancy. It's not, it was cheap and it's nice. It's going to make it nice and quiet because that's what uh, they wanted the cart to be nice and quiet not so loud to wake up the neighbors so all we need to do now is take this over to the cart bolt it down put some oil and gas in it and see if we can't make some noise until then thanks everybody and do all the stuff underneath comment tell me what i did right did wrong all that kind of good stuff welcome to all the new folks and we'll see you next time